sports scene with Greg Picaveros is now on the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. Want to thank Aramark, Aramark Refreshment Services, great coffee, water, snacks, and much more, supplies and vending. They do great service at the Newport News Shipyard and other leading companies in Hampton Roads, local, USA, and countries abroad. Aramark is a name you can count on. Google Aramark Refreshment Services, like them on Facebook, Aramark. Thank you so much. Now, it's time for Sports Scene with Greg Bicavaris. Here's your host, Greg Bicavaris. And welcome back to Sports Scene with Greg Bicavaris all over the Odyssey app and wherever you get your podcast, including social media. We've had him on before. Let's talk to Wube Gabre. He's a Norfolk State football analyst and commentator, among many things. Wube, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great, great. Once again, thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Right in the middle of the summer, but we're not too far along from Norfolk State's football season. And my question is, they did have a losing record last year. What do you expect in 2024? Well, just like uh, everybody else, we expect them to have uh, a better season. Uh, again, Dawson Odoms is, is coming into his fourth full season, and everyone uh, around the school and, and all the fans and alumni are really hoping that they can turn things around. They have a tough schedule. Um, to start off, they have a FM, a Florida A&M in Atlanta, so um, along with some other intriguing matchups. So that's a, a, a good, definitely be a test for the Spartans right out the gate. And there is a good example, too, and that game will be on ABC or national TV, great exposure. Right. One thing we've learned about the portal in NIL, college football and college basketball and all sports change year to year, but college football especially, Wube, because you have so many players that make up a roster. And, and then, like we talked about before with the NIL and the transfer portal, it's it's so many dynamics and components that are going in to college football these days. It's hard to keep up with so many uh, players going to different places. But, again, I think with the 12-team playoff, that's going to make things really interesting in college football. I mean, you have a extended playoff field. Um, you know, now schools are, are, are really gearing up to make that championship run. And I'm really looking forward to the uh, college football season. I mean, you look at the first five games for Norfolk State before we move on. Their next game is on the road against East Carolina. That's not going to be easy. Then they take on Virginia State, which used to be a big rivalry for them. They take on Hampton, another rival. Then, of course, VMI. So none of these games are going to be easy. I, I like their schedule. You have some regional matchups. Like you said, the Battle of the Bay with Hampton, Virginia State. They've had a, 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 a very great long lasting rivalry with them with you know the labor day classic and virginia state actually upset the sparks last year at home so um and of course east carolina right down the road in greenville that's going to be a tough game for them the schedule's tough but um this is the year they have to turn it around and make some noise in the MEAC. some things i'm going to be looking at nationally how will alabama do post saban how will ohio state do with all these new coordinators they've got they've always expected to be in the top five or the top ten and of course Locally, Wube, Virginia, and Virginia Tech really have not had strong years recently. I think Tech uh, will have a good year. They're turning around. You know, Coach Prize really changing the culture. He's recruiting more in the 757, which always helps. We know what that can do for your team when you have 757 recruits that really want to go to Virginia Tech, like like, in the, like, like back in the day. Um, UVA is still a mystery to me. Um, you know, they didn't have a great year last year but again when you have a new coach just trying to change the culture culture usually year three or four you start to see those things change um and yeah and then nationally like you said ohio state and some in some polls i've seen they're the preseason number one chip kelly comes over from ucla as their, as their oc um again with alabama not having saban will J- Jalen milrow um continue to, to progress and, and carry his team to the playoff that's going to be very intriguing the sec is expanded now you have all these different teams and and the big 10 as well so it's just it's going to be an interesting college season i'm looking forward to it like i said earlier yeah just like uh norfolk state takes on east carolina so does old dominion and they open up with south carolina on the road and then their third game is against virginia tech a team that they've beaten before as well Tough schedule, Greg, for Old Dominion. Like you said, they start out with South Carolina. Tech and JMU will be at home. Obviously, those games will, will be sold out. Um, and, 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 and again, Grant Wilson, a quarterback, when you have a starter that comes back at the quarterback position, you always have a chance. And I think that's why Old Dominion will be better than what people think because they have a quarterback in Grant Wilson who showed some, some, some great strides in his, uh, in his last year as a starter for the, for the Monarchs. 
switching gears to the NFL, the Ravens had a excellent season last year, went to the postseason, but I guess the, the continual thing will be how will Lamar and company evolve in the postseason? Again, like I talked about with Grant Wilson uh, at Old Dominion, you have Lamar, you always have a chance. He's yeah. the MVP, the reigning MVP. Um, the Ravens will always be a favorite with him. Uh, you know, They made it to the AFC Championship game, lost to the Chiefs, who eventually won the Super Bowl, but um, there'll be a factor again in the AFC. Again, you have to get over the hump, like we talked about earlier in our earlier conversation during the football season when they were riding high, had a nice winning streak. Um, they have to get over the hump. They lost some key pieces. You know, they lost Patrick Queen to to the Steelers of all places. That linebacker is going to have to replace him. I think they have a, a couple of other players that will be able to replace him. They lost a couple of edge rushers. So um, they have what it takes every year. You know, the, the organization is well run. And they do a great job of, of adding pieces when pieces are gone. This is Sports Scene with Greg Bigavaris talking to Wube Gabre. And, of course, um, you talk about the NFL at whole. But uh, right here locally, you know, Mike Tomlin went to Denby High School in William & Mary. And, of course, he's going to be facing uh, with two new quarterbacks. Yeah, interesting. I, I was really baffled by the the, uh, the fields pick up when they had Russell. I understand that they're going to battle out for the number one position. That's going to be a position in a – in a place that everybody's going to have their eyes on, especially with those two quarterbacks trying to figure out who's going to be the starter. Um, it's always they always say if you have two starters, you don't have any. So we'll see what they uh, what they do with that position. They've they've had a tough time in the last few years um, with the draft and some trades at that position. You know, Pickett has moved on, and you know now they have these two guys battling out, um, and both of them are, are, are capable. I like Fields actually coming out of Ohio State. I just didn't think the Bears had the right system for him, but. Um, and, of course, Russell's a Super Bowl champion, so you, you can't go wrong with that. So that, that's going to be an interesting dynamic to see what you know unfolds from that uh, from that position at, at Pittsburgh. And these are both alpha males, Wube. They're going to want the hands on the ball. They're going to want to start. Russell's won a Super Bowl before. He's played for Seattle. He's played for Denver. His time clock is ticking as well. Yeah, I mean, he, he at Denver, it didn't work out for him, but you're right that his clock is ticking, and this is probably going to be his last opportunity as a starter. And when you have someone to push you as young and, and as talented as Fields, I think that's when the antennas go up and you start to play good football. I mean, that again, I, I think he will be tabbed as a starter early, and then maybe Fields will have an opportunity to take that position. But, you know, with, with, with Russell Wilson there, um, a veteran, people uh, respect his, his leadership. I think that's going to be um, – some, something to definitely check out and, and see how long it lasts because you know how fans can be as soon as he starts messing up with it, with a guy behind him in fields, they're going to be calling for the backup as they always do when the starter's not playing well. Yeah, a lot of great rookie quarterbacks coming out, but, um, you know, fields, in my opinion, is the starter. So is Wilson. But like you said, 2024 might be one of the last opportunities for Wilson to start as well. What about the commanders? They got a new coach and we'll see what they do. They definitely need to get back on the winning track. They got Mr. Daniels, uh, Jaden Daniels from LSU, the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback, new coaching staff, um, just a whole new era of football in D.C. Um, we'll see what they do. Um, you know, it's gonna again, it's always uh, the or, it's always the organization um, that is having the issues, but now they they've changed over leadership. They have a new new coaching staff. They drafted their their future quarterback and. Um, they have some receivers for them with, with McLaren outside. So we'll see how they do. I mean, the, the defense has always played well. Um, and, they're all, again, they have to battle the, the Cowboys twice and the Eagles and the NFC East. But uh, I think they'll be okay this year. I think they'll actually turn it around and they have a chance to be a playoff team as well. We'll see what Dan Quinn can do. He is still haunted with what he did in Atlanta. So it's his chance to move on away from Dallas, and we'll see what Quinn and company can do. But they're going to want at least to go 500 or a winning record, I would think. You know, they went in 4-13 and last year. Yeah, I think it would be a lot better than that. Again, when you have a rookie quarterback, you're going to have your ups and downs. Um, but I think if they have enough around him, we've seen rookie quarterbacks uh, uh, play well when they have talent around them. So, um He's he's very talented. I like Daniels a lot coming out of LSU. Even when he's at Arizona State, he's a good quarterback. But and him being the Heisman Trophy, a lot of pressure is going to be on him, especially in D.C. where that fan base really wants to win. Very good talking to Wube Gabre. This is Greg Bickavaris. Talk about some of your other broadcasting work that you do. Yeah, I mean, like you said earlier, I'm the uh, sports analyst with uh, NSU Sports Network. I do their um, football games, um, a lot of home and a lot of regional games as well when they're on the road. And, of course, the basketball season as well, men and women. 
Um, and I love it, man. I do, I do, I do it. I've been doing it for five years now. Going on my sixth season, um, being the sports analyst at NSU Network, and also have a podcast, uh, Real to Real, uh, which I interview uh, various athletes. Maybe some, some of them, most of them have seven five seven ties, but I try to be a national uh, podcast as well. And I'm starting to get get back into that in the next month or so. Very nice talking to Wu Bay. I was in your hometown in Baltimore last month seeing Ice Cube's Big Three and of course a lot of yeah. former NBA players. One of my favorite was Michael Beasley. He's still Wube, very talented. I mean he's in his mid thirties, but he can still play basketball. Of course, that's three on three, it's half court. It's not the same thing as the NBA is, but I do agree with what Ice Cube does say, one of the best rappers, musicians and actors of all time, that why isn't the NBA giving them the love and respect they deserve? Especially when you have head coaches like George Gervin, Dr. J, you know, you got Oakley out there, you know, got Nancy Lieberman. These are elite household names, and a lot of these guys, like Beasley, are former NBA players. And they all, res- they're all they're well respected. Like you said, Nancy Lieberman, she's respected by a lot of NBA players for what she does on the coaching uh, aspect of it. A- a- an advocate of all sports, I mean, of all, all, all men and women. And, in basketball, everybody loves her. And I, I love what I love what Ice Cube, Ice Cube is doing. It's another outlet for for guys who who, who may be not NBA material, but they can also uh, still play. And he's giving them an opportunity. He's, he's going from city to cities. And again, like you said, he was in Baltimore downtown. The the, the, the remodeled uh, Baltimore Arena. Now it's it's nice uh, the way what they've done to that arena to make it look nice. And I'm glad Ice Cube was able to come to Baltimore and, and give the fans a show. And 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 then, uh, a nice opportunity for people to see what the three on three is about. Yeah, last year they were in Charlotte and D.C. I saw them both. I've seen them three times, and it was great to see the rapper Dougie Fresh there. So he really does bring pop culture, music, entertainment, and all cultures, all people going there. Just a great demographic going to the big three. It's a lot of fun. First one to fifty win by two. So it's a lot of fast paced basketball, even a four point shot. Yeah, it's, it's it's really it's 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 I love it. I watch it on TV all the time, so uh, I can only imagine what it's like in person. I haven't had a chance to see it in person yet, but I I watch I try to watch as many as I can on TV, and I love the the different the, the different rules. They have the one on one after the foul, uh, you know, the four point shot, like you said. It's it's really interesting, and I'm I'm glad Ice Cube is is is, is really successful, and it looks like his league is growing as well. So I love to see that, especially from from Ice Cube, who's been in the limelight for this long. Switching gears to baseball, how about those Orioles in first place by one game against the American League East? Great team, the Yankees. Both are going to be going neck and neck. That's going to be a great race toward the uh, season wrap-up here the next few months. And one thing about baseball, folks, it's not like they played 81 games. The Yankees have already played 98 games. So 81, you would think, is halfway for 162. They're past that. So the time is right now for the Orioles. You know, Orioles had a five-game losing streak prior to, prior to that uh, remarkable six-to-five win right before the All-Star break. They do have a one-game lead on the Yankees, but like you said, Greg, that's going to be a battle that is going to go down to the wire. I believe uh, both of those teams are, are are getting better. I still think the Orioles need one more starting pitcher to do something in October. In October, but um, I I grew up watching the Orioles. I grew up walking to the stadium, the old Memorial Stadium. So it's it's great to see because for so long we were at the bottom of of the of the division um to see us now the last three to four years at the top and then you see the yankees and the red Sox below us it's a great feeling but we have a long season left um i like the way they're playing um you know that five game losing streak did hurt the, the yankees gained some ground but again we go into all-star break with a one game lead get some time to refresh our batteries and, and make that run yeah i've gone as a fan to the old um place the Orioles used to play at Memorial where the Colts played at as well and of course worked yep, in yep. worked in media now where they're at at the Camden Yards what a great facility get a hot oh, dog a drink you know watch some good baseball and of course Wube as you know the Tides are the triple A of the um the Orioles the Orioles have had some pitching injuries this year yes they have uh, that's really going to hurt them uh down the stretch uh, they picked up a couple of uh, of minor league guys are going to help them out later on. And how about the Tides? Last year they ended up winning the international championship. Um, so much talent down there for the for the Orioles um, that they can bring up some guys that 
that can help them later on. But, yeah, they're they definitely going to need another pitcher if they want to do something in October. Yeah, and the one thing, too, you mentioned about the Tides' extended season, but you know good and well, Wube, the Orioles are going to get the cream of the crop. They're going to get the best Tides players to help them in the postseason as well. If they got to get them in September, they're going to nab them. Yeah, and they have a lot of talent to choose from. Um, they just picked up a, another draft pick, a, a local guy um, from Cox, from uh, the University of Virginia. So they, they have so much local talent. And, you know, it's it's hit or miss um, on, on, in the draft, especially in baseball. And that's what the Orioles have done so well. Um, just like the Ravens, they, they draft well. And they hit home runs with Gunnar Henderson and, and Rutschman. And, and the list goes on and on. They, they, they've done a great job of, of drafting and developing. And I think that's what makes this run so nice. Is this, These are Oriole guys. These, these come from the farm system. They were drafted. They were developed in the, in the organization. And now they're at the big leagues playing at the highest level. And, um, and now we're in first place because of it. And both teams, the Orioles and the Ravens, have both won championships. And this year could be the year of the Orioles in 24 and the Ravens in the 24-25 football season. Wube, all the best to you. Thank you for your time, your talent, and your treasure, and for what you do in sports in the Hampton Roads community. Well, Greg, I thank you for having me on. I love your show, man. How much I respect you. Um, and anytime you want me to come back on, I'm, all, I'm always here for you, man. You're awesome. My pleasure. Always enjoy chatting. Wube Gabray right there, Norfolk State sports commentator, and much more. Sports scene will continue after these messages. Buffalo Wild Wings in Newport News. Great lunch and dinner late night at Buffalo Wild Wings. Delicious food, wings, appetizers, beverages, all the games on TV. Open seven days a week. Like Buffalo Wild Wings on Facebook. Friendly and hardworking staff. Jefferson Avenue in Newport News by Patrick Henry Mall. Thank you for listening to Sports Scene. Always great to connect at Greg Bick on YouTube. That's G-R-E-G-B-I-C. Subscribe. Also, Greg Bick on Twitter as well. For more, go to gjbtv.com, hrsmhof.com, and hamptonroadsonlinemall.com. Also, connect with me on LinkedIn, Greg Bickavaris, and also Facebook, Greg Bickavaris as well. Thank you. C.P. Shucker is two locations in Virginia Beach, Shore Drive, Pacific Avenue, best food in the beach. Decades of excellence. Matt, Mark, Chef Leon, and the great staff will take care of you for lunch and dinner and late night. Something for everyone. All the sports on TV. Watch all the games right there at C.P. Shucker's. Eat or be eaten. Mi Hogar is your restaurant for the finest Mexican cuisine in Hampton Roads. At Mi Hogar, everything is prepared fresh in a casual and comfortable atmosphere. Enjoy traditional favorites such as quesadillas, tacos, burritos, and fajitas, as well as refreshing beverages. Mi Hogar is located at 4201 Granby Street and is a tradition in Norfolk. Call 640-7705 and log on to MiHogarMexicanRestaurant.com. At Mi Hogar, there's something for everyone. So, no! what's Greg's problem? I'm very mad! God, I'm so mad right now! I know you're mad. I know you're upset. It's time for what teased Greg off. What teased me off, always a fun segment right here. Can small servings at restaurants, they're getting smaller and smaller, whether you eat there or take out. What do they call them, small plates? It seems like it, I literally. Want a, I want a big plate, not a small one. Yeah, phony political endorsements. Either you endorse a candidate or don't, but when you knock him down or knock her down, then all of a sudden you endorse him. It comes across as phony. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of like, uh, what's his name, Ted uh, Cruz? He just got lambasted by Trump, and now he's kissing that guy's ass. Come on. Exactly. And, of course, uh, when you go to a restaurant or, let's say, a fast food place, a coffee shop, you know what I'm talking about, and everybody there working has their backs turned against the customers. I'm sorry, having your back turned against anyone in business or pleasure is rude. That's just unacceptable. What tees you off, Kenny? Well, thanks for asking, Greg. Those giant roach things, some Mm -hmm. people call them water bugs. They're not water bugs. They're giant freaking roaches. Let me just say this real quick about it. Any spray, whether it's an aerosol or even glass cleaner, will kill them. First time I saw one of those when I moved to Virginia, I took a broomstick and brought it straight down on it. Nailed it right in the middle. One half ran this way and the other half ran the other way. I was like, yeah. They serve no purpose. 
Uh, that coworker who only gets sick on a Monday or Friday, unless it's a long holiday weekend, then they may call in on a Tuesday. Exactly. You know the one I'm talking about. Sure. And when anyone says, have a nice day, it used to be have a nice day meant have a nice day. But when did it become an insult, a way to dismiss somebody in the rudest way possible? Or limited conversation just so you don't have to talk to that person or extend any effort or energy. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. And let me add this to you. The person that tried to assassinate President Trump, I personally hope he rots and you know where. Well, he's probably there right now. Exactly. That's what teases us off. Let's welcome Lee Matney from Matney Gallery in Williamsburg. Lee, how are you, my friend? Very good. Thank you. Lee, explain what Matney Gallery is, very distinguished, and the consultancy that you do and how they do things differently from other projects. Well, Matney Gallery uh, specializes in Southern art from Virginia colleges. We are doing a lot with Houston, Texas right now. Uh, We're bringing art to the area that would normally not be seen here. We represent the artist for the long term. Very nice. Explain the connection of the gallery in Williamsburg to Athens, Georgia. You're really big into Athens, Georgia. You travel there several times a year about the art and the music scene. Yes. Well, I, I went to University of Georgia for undergraduate in Athens. I knew many artists there, and uh, we started with only Athens, Georgia artists. And, and some were connected to the music scene there. There's many different connections to the arts. It goes back to the B-52s and R.E.M that uh, connect to some of the artists we, we uh, represent. Art is very nice. Williamsburg's a very uh, beautiful area there. Comment on the photography that you have at the gallery, because one thing about your gallery in Williamsburg, that it's always evolving. We have projects with the college. Sometimes we, we collaborate and uh, we'll bring in an artist from London. We uh, recently brought in an artist from Houston, Texas. Grayson Chandler, has his work, his abstract uh, art is on display now. He has, he's collected by the Museum of Fine Arts, Houston. So we're always looking up. Uh, Steve Prince, Director of Engagement of uh, Muscarelli Museum, has work in our gallery. We work with the college, uh, the students, for their capstone show at William Mary every year. So it's somewhat of a laboratory for collectors and artists to build new bridges and build a bigger art scene here. Tell us about uh, what your favorite part of the gallery is and how people can get a hold of you. MattneyGallery.com, 757-675-6627 is my, our telephone number. 757-675-6627. Lee Matney is on Facebook and also LinkedIn as well. Talk about the intersections with museum projects. That's important to you. Many of our patrons um, are part of uh, historical art collections. Uh, We've also done shows in Houston, Texas, for Art Rosenbaum, a professor at University of Georgia, and his friends, and that intersects with Howard Finster and self-trained artists. So we had a show at Muscarelli, we were part of a show in Muscarelli for a self-taught art called uh, Spectrum of Creativity, which included Lynn Jenkin, who's one of the artists we represent in his 80s. And there are many different intersections that we don't even know will be there, and then it happens. It's kind of like a kind of the gravitas of, of the art world. That we, it's, it's kind of a living entity in some ways. Matney Fine Art Gallery and Consulting, Lee Matney is a curator located at 5435 Richmond Road in beautiful Williamsburg. Their phone number is 757-675-6627. Lee, what is the, and of course the website, lindamatneygallery.com. Lee, what is the future of your gallery? The future is, uh, you know, more uh, exciting art for collectors in Virginia and to, uh, on to, to the next level, more closer to New York or Los Angeles, in my opinion. Uh, we mentor students. We have a student from William and Mary who will have a show in the summer, a photographer. Uh, you'll see more photography. You'll see more painting. You'll see more intersections internationally. We have uh, many artists from even outside of the United States that are. We have artists, a couple of artists who are in the collection of the Music of Modern Art. If you come to our gallery, you can see our catalogs and see uh, presentations on many of these artists. A lot of good stuff on the website, uh, Matney Gallery, lindamatneygallery.com. Artists, current contact information about Lee Matney, Art Rosenbaum, and the great story and what a wonderful cause it is in honor of his mother. Lee, all the best. Give us your final thought. Uh, Well, I'm just excited to be working on uh, art projects in Virginia and bringing uh, art to Virginia that normally would not be uh, seen or uh, to a new audience.
all the best, and you're always having shows at your gallery, too. So those are always fun, and those are free, correct? Uh, yes, they're all free, definitely. Of course, it is. Linda Matney, gallery.com. Lee Matney, all the best, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, open in Yorktown. Go by and see Paul and his wonderful staff. High-quality chicken fingers, fries, coleslaw, Texas toast. It is delicious. The great chicken sandwich, cane sauce, a kid's menu, refreshing beverages, tailgates. They've got it all. Follow Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers on social media. They are open daily. Sakura Japanese Restaurant in Chesapeake is your destination for excellent Japanese food featuring fresh sushi and hot dishes prepared in the kitchen for lunch and dinner. Sakura is located at 1437 Sam's Drive at the Walmart Way Crossing. Oh Yummy Sushi is at the Renaissance Place at 401 North Great Neck Road in Virginia Beach. Both Sakura in Chesapeake and Oh Yummy Sushi in Virginia Beach are available with DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, and Pickup. Tasty Japanese food the way you want it is at Sakura and Oh Yummy Sushi. Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville and Virginia Beach open daily for lunch and dinner. Mike and the staff will take good care of you. Burgers, steaks, salads, appetizers, desserts, and much more. Great atmosphere, nice bar, spacious dining room. 1255 Fordham Drive in Virginia Beach. Want to thank Aramark. Aramark Refreshment Services, great coffee, water, snacks, and much more, supplies and vending. They do great service at the Newport News Shipyard and other leading companies in Hampton Roads, local, USA, and countries abroad. Aramark is a name you can count on. Google Aramark Refreshment Services. Like them on Facebook. Aramark, thank you so much. A tradition of excellence for over 50 years is the Aberdeen Barn Steakhouse in Virginia Beach. Start your experience off with she crab soup, an assortment of appetizers such as the fried oyster, Rockefeller, crispy calamari, just to name a few. Aberdeen Barn has the finest premium steaks, prime rib, grilled tomahawk ribeye, seafood, chicken, pasta dishes, and live music in a most pleasing atmosphere. Open daily, visit them at 5805 Northampton Boulevard in Virginia Beach. Call 464-1580 and log on to Aberdeen Barn Net. Sakura Sushi Bar is now open in Virginia Beach. For one-of-a-kind dining experience, Sakura and Red Mill is a favorite of locals and tourists. Tasty sushi prepared fresh for you, as well as delicious entrees from the kitchen. This is the go-to place for sushi lovers. Enjoy lunch and dinner daily with some refreshing cocktails and adult beverages. Sakura Sushi Bar is located at 2137 Upton Drive and is open daily. Call 757-522-7288. And enjoy your next meal at Sakura Sushi Bar at Red Mill Commons. I want to thank our guests today on Sports Scene in July. Sports Scene with Greg Picaveras, Wube Gabre, and also Lee Matney. Don't forget GJBTV.com. Click the YouTube link for archives as well as audio, video, and content on Greg Bick on YouTube. That's G R E G B I C as well. Thanks for listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bickavaris on the Odyssey app and wherever you get your podcast. We'll talk to you soon. Sakura Japanese Restaurant in Chesapeake is your destination for excellent Japanese food featuring fresh sushi and hot dishes prepared in the kitchen for lunch and dinner. Sakura is located at 1437 Sam's Drive at the Walmart Way Crossing. Oh Yummy Sushi is at the Renaissance Place at 401 North Great Neck Road in Virginia Beach. Both Sakura in Chesapeake and Oh Yummy Sushi in Virginia Beach are available with DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, and Pickup. Tasty Japanese food the way you want it is at Sakura and Oh Yummy Sushi. Sushi. You've been listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras.